Here. Welcome to Smashing Times celebration of International Poetry Day. My poem, uh, which has given me a lot of inspiration over the years, especially the first couple of lines, is a poem by Rudyard Kipling called If. It was written in the 1800s and although addressed by a man to his son, uh, equally applies by a woman to her daughter. Uh, it was one of my dad's favourite poems and I recently found out my Auntie Moyne's favourite poem so I dedicate this to their memories. So, let's go. If. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about don't deal in lies or being hated. Don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or watch the things you gave life to, broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to hold your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will that says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill an unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son, or a woman. Thanks and happy International Ports Day. This short poem is called The Gallant Sex by Alice Dewar Miller. She was a writer, poet, satirist, and suffragette during the first half of the 20th century, and this is from a collection of her work published in 1915 titled, Are Women People? She prefaces the poem with this explanation. A woman engineer has been dismissed by the Board of Education under their new rule that women shall not attend high-pressure boilers. Although her work has been satisfactory, and she holds a license to attend such boilers from the police department. The Gallant Sex by Alice Dewar Miller Lady, dangers lurk in boilers, risks I could not let you face. Men were meant to be the toilers, home, you know, is woman's place. Have no home? Well, is that so? Still, it's not my fault, you know. Charming lady, work no more. Fair you are, and sweet as honey. Work might make your fingers sore. And besides, I need the money. Prithee, rest, or starve, or rob. Only let me have your job. Smiling is Infectious by Spike Milligan Smiling is infectious. You catch it like the flu. When someone smiled at me today, I started smiling too. I passed around the corner, and someone saw my grin. When he smiled, I realised that I'd pass it on to him. I thought about that smile, then I realised it's worked. A single smile, just like mine, could travel around the earth. So if you feel a smile begin, don't leave it undetected. Let's start an epidemic quick and get the world infected. The Presence of God 
by Joseph Mary Plunkett. I see his blood upon the rose, and in the stars the glory of his eyes. His body gleams amid eternal snows, his tears fall from the skies. I see his face in every flower, the thunder and the singing of the birds are but his voice, and carven by his power, rocks are his written words. All pathways by his feet are worn, his strong heart stirs the ever-beating sea, his crown of thorns is twined with every thorn, his cross is every tree. Hi everyone, Phelan here from Smashing Times again. Um, I'm going to read a poem now for Poetry Day Ireland um, and it fits into our theme of the poetry of witness. So it's called River Voss and it's one I wrote through Irish um, and it's about a homeless person. So lay me in down anish. River Voss Sula Mora Gil Islechna Snitcha Bail Sukir Ul Linche Gon Deedon, Gon Fuishev, Gon Chara, Ekfekinder and Illa. A hula co gloss la kudna den down. Nak wakashe reeve, nak veki. A hula e gliskenok, fluch. O hitum na monsoon is jig. Fui versha dia do hika dun fein. Dia arachtoch, mari. O winnen plak as a chri. Fekinche, tevhir dien galer. Bala mor klukuch avosh ek chokt. Fish on a dogan she suvnis bug. Gan nora. Kain chushla nora. Shilin she mwidila marav hana. River vos. Taiv shir snav. Dal. Riv hubber durk dyna anima. Riv vera. Ishki avaha. Hi there, Larissa here from Smashing Times, and I'm going to read a poem by Edward Lear called The Jumbelies. They went to sea in a sieve, they did, in a sieve they went to sea. In spite of all their friends could say, on a winter's morn, on a stormy day, in a sieve they went to sea. And when the sieve turned round and round, and everyone cried, you'll all be drowned, they cried aloud, our sieve ain't big, but we don't care a button, we don't care a fig. In a sieve we'll go to sea. Far and few, far and few, are the land where the Jumbelies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. They sailed away in a sieve they did, in a sieve they sailed so fast, with only a beautiful pea-green veil tied with a riband by way of a sail to a small tobacco pipe mast. And everyone said, who saw them go, oh, won't they soon be upset, you know? For the sky is dark and the voyage is long, and happen what may, it's extremely wrong in a sieve to sail so fast. Far and few, far and few, are the lands where the Jumbelies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve. The water it soon came in, it did. The winter, the water it soon came in. So to keep them dry, they wrapped their feet in a pinky paper, all folded neat. And they fastened it down with a pin. And they passed the night in a crockery jar. And each of them said, how wise we are. Though the sky be dark and the voyage be long, yet we never can think we were rash or wrong, while round in our sieve we spin. Far and few, far and few are the land where the Jumbelies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. And all night long they sailed away, and when the sun went down, they whistled and warbled a, a moony song to the echoing sound of a coppery gong in the shade of the mountains brown. Oh, Timbaloo, how happy we are when we live in a sieve and a crockery jar and all night long in the moonlight pale, we sail away with a pea green sail in the shade of the mountains brown. 
Far and few, far and few, are the land where the Jumbleys live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. They sailed to the western sea, they did, to a land all covered with trees. And they bought an owl and a useful cart, and a pound of rice, and a cranberry tart, and a hive of silvery bees. And they bought a pig and some green jackdaws and a lovely monkey with lollipop paws and 40 bottles of ringbow ree and no end of Stilton cheese. Far and few, far and few are the land where the Jumbleys live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve. And in 20 years they all came back, in 20 years or more. And everyone said, how tall they've grown, for they've been to the lakes and the terrible zone and the hills of the Chankily Boar. And they drank their health and gave them a feast of dumplings made of beautiful yeast. And everyone said, if we only live, we too will go to sea in a sieve, to the hills of the Chankily Boar. Far and few, far and few are the land where the Jumbleys live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. In Time by Mary Moynihan. In Time. In Time, we will recover. In Time, there will be a vaccine and we will be able to go outside, to work, to the park, to the mountains, to meet our family and friends, to travel to the ends of the earth if we wish. In time, we will rebuild our world. We will create an equal society where people matter, our family and friends, our co-workers, all those that provide services, who work in education and health care services, all those that look after others. We will get our values right and our priorities straight and create a world socially, culturally, politically and economically around what really matters. And that is people, the planet we live on, and dignity and respect for all. In time, we will meet each other in the darkness of a theater space and know again the magic of a connection that is invisible yet truly felt. In time, we shall hug all those we love and have missed. In time, we shall mourn and remember those who have died. In time, we shall bear witness. In time, we will breathe calmly again. In time, we shall create and imagine. What if? In time, we shall reject governments that do not respect people or act on their behalf. In time, we shall create respect for the planet we live on and know that our atmosphere is cleaning up and soon the world will be able to breathe again. In time, we shall be true to our inner selves and hear the inner voice of our own souls and follow our heart's desire. In time, we shall serve ourselves and equally at the same time serve others. In time, we shall fight the good fight, and at the same time, let go. In time, we shall enjoy life and be present in the moment. And perhaps one day, in time, we shall realize there is no time. The following is an excerpt from Naked by Benjamin Zephaniah, who was born and raised in Birmingham. 
His poetry is strongly influenced by the music and poetry of Jamaica and what he calls street politics. Naked by Benjamin Zephaniah. This is me naked. I love being naked. I look at my naked self and I know that I was made for nakedness. I see my neighbours naked. I see booted and suited men naked and women in Perda naked. And all the priests and politicians who I despise are naked, looking at the truth. Facing reality, having to deal with themselves by themselves. Praise the gods for the black, brown, white, fat, thin, one-legged, blind, bent and uneven naked bodies. Praise the female gods and the older gods for the naked body beautiful. First, they came for the communists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out, because I am not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I am not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, because I am not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. What are heavy, sand, sea, and sorrow? What are brief, today and tomorrow? What are frail, spring blossoms and youth? What are deep, the oceans? I'm going to read a poem by Pablo Neruda called The Dictators. The delicate dictator is talking with top hats, gold braid and collars. The tiny palace gleams like a watch and the rapid laughs with gloves on cross the corridors at times and join the dead voices and the blue mouths freshly buried. The weeping cannot be seen, like a plant, whose seeds fall endlessly on the earth, whose large blind leaves grow even without light. Hatred has grown scale on scale, blow on blow, in the ghastly water of the swamp, with a snout full of ooze and silence. The reason I picked this poem, because I think it echoes a lot of what is going on today in the world. The invisible veil of fascist leadership. Um, Neruda was born witness to violent acts of tyranny in his home country of Chile, when dictator Pinochet and his regime overthrew the democratically elected socialist president, Salvador Allende, in a CIA instigated coup in 1973. The lines in the poem, the delicate dictator is talking with top hats, gold braid and collars, begs the question, does a leader have to address their people exuberantly adorned to incite fear and hatred? Or can they appear as the humble custodian in a suit and tie? In the poem, the suffering and misery of the ordinary citizen falls on deaf ears as Neruda so poetically and sadly writes, the weeping cannot be seen like a plant whose seeds fall endlessly to the earth. The frustration is poignant as the word endlessly reverberates as pains that cannot be healed 
when fascist rule becomes the hammer on society. Its evocation, blow on blow in the ghastly water of the swamp, paints a very dark and foul stagnation on humanity, where residual scarring cannot be seen, but is very much omnipresent. The dictator speaks volumes about how ultimate and supreme power can strip humanity bare. And Neruda used this writing so eloquently to illuminate such horror as tones of resistance. The following excerpt is taken from Ivan Boland's poem, Our Future Will Become the Past of Other Women. We here at Smashing Times extend our deepest sympathies and condolences to Ivan's family and friends, and indeed all who knew her. Uh, this week is particularly poignant, and we are thinking of them, and we know how much of an influence she had on us, so we hope you enjoy. Our island that was once settled and removed on the edge of Europe is now a bridge to the world. And so we share this day with women everywhere. For those who find the rights they need to be hard won, not guaranteed, not easily given, for each one we have a gift, a talisman. The memory of these Irish women who struggled and prevailed. For whose sake we choose these things from their date to honour, to remember and to celebrate. All those who called for it, a vote for women. All those who had the faith that voices can be heard and raised. All those who saw their hopes becoming the law. All those who woke in a new state, flowering from an old nation and found justice no longer blind, inequity set aside and freedom redefined. <laughs> 